Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for invi inviting me. I think this is a really good idea. I'm really helpful for traders, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. To start things off, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Because we would love to get to know you personally. Yeah, sure. I, and I've been around a bit because uh, you know, I've got kids in their 20s, so I'll, I'll try and keep this very short. But basically, I started life when I left school um, actually trading on the Lloyd's of London floor, so the insurance market. Now, whilst that wasn't trading stocks or currencies, it was um, – you know, an open trading floor where, you know, negotiations and deals and so on were done. And that sort of gave me the mindset for trading. I think, you know, coming straight from school into an environment like that, uh, where it's just, you know, an open trading floor, that, it, you know, right from the start gave me the mindset of this idea of, of this concept of trading. And I worked in financial services, you know, throughout my whole career my whole working life uh, and then basically started trading my own account within a, a few years you know leaving school and got married and I, I actually put a deposit down on a house based on trading profits so you know I discovered from an early day that you know I, I could trade I could make a profit out of it I could be consistent um, and that just uh, you know, gave me the impetus to carry on trading but to study it and to um, you know expand my knowledge, and I've been expanding it ever since. So <laughs> yeah, my, my trading life goes right back to um, day one. That's excellent that you were able to put a deposit down from trading because a lot of traders struggle with that, actually making a profit. So it's uh, it's really inspiring to hear that. It, it is, and and yeah, I was just swing trading. I wasn't day trading i was just just buying and holding in, in, in the when i started trading it was in a, a period of when you could just buy and buy and hold for you know, not not for a, a huge amount of time but certainly months weeks and months and um yeah and, and the, so that was fundamental trading using a strategy of you know value system and then but i learned technical analysis about 12 years ago uh and then went into you know, I invested very heavily in um, courses and mentoring over that sort of, you know, over the period of time and uh, and then took it from there. So then took my trading life and my training experience into the whole world of trading off charts. So when we when you were going through that period, was there a time when you actually felt that this wasn't working, that you felt like you were failing at trading? There, there was. And it's interesting that the, the time that I felt that, was quite soon after um, some initial courses on technical analysis. So the transition from swing trading and the transition from buying and holding swing trading in stocks to day trading, and I actually started tra day trading in commodities, gold and oil primarily, and, and the grains. And initially in those very, very early days, you know, I, I struggled and, you know, I had, some some good periods but i would have a tendency to give some profits back and so you know that was the the period in which you know i did struggle so what i did was i just stopped what i was doing sort of pulled up the bridges and then just asked myself the question you know what what do i want from trading and and how am i going to make a success of this so yeah there, there was a period when when i i was struggling and failing and it was and it was definitely that transition period from from swing trading to day trading so what did you find was your biggest challenge in terms of getting consistently profitable? And how did you manage to get past that? My biggest challenge was working out what I needed to do, what, working out a trading style that, that suited me and, and working out exactly what I, I needed to get from technical analysis. You know, how was I going to approach these markets and, and enter and exit these markets? And it had a lot to do with my own temperament. You know, I, I found that I was too impatient. And if you're trading Forex, particularly um, you know, intra-week and, and swing trading Forex, you've got to be you know, very, uh, very, very patient. I found that I was very impatient. I wanted instant results. So that was one of the main things uh, that I was up against. So what I did was I just stood back and, and 
worked out what I wanted from trading, worked out where I was successful in day trading and, and, and technical analysis, worked out what my strengths and weaknesses were, and then stood back and developed a trade plan that best suited my personality and my own style. Um, so it was a question of building on the training I'd done, the education I'd done, expanding it, making sure that I was taking into consideration all the factors that I needed to, and also focusing on a market that was right for me and, and my personality. And once I'd worked that out, then I could go back into the markets and really focus and, and be fully prepared and then start to build my accounts. You know, that's a really interesting topic that you bring up um, here, because a lot of times when somebody is looking at getting into trading or gets into trading and is looking into getting trained further, the one thing that they focus a lot on, and I did this, everybody does this, till you've been around the block a few times is we are always looking at what's the best strategy out there you know is there a holy grail what can we do to make profits quickly but we we don't actually think about our temperament like what markets like you mentioned suit us the best what type of trading style suits us the best those are the some of the questions that we don't actually stop to ask ourselves absolutely and i think there are different pieces of the jigsaw and I think until you understand what those pieces of the jigsaw are and how to knit them together, uh, I, I don't think you will be consistent. So it's like everything else. I mean, if you want to be a, a good lawyer, you want to be a good accountant, you want to be a good dentist, or or you just want to be um, you know, an expert in another, an artist even, it is all about hard work. I mean, you ask any of these people, you know, how they, what their journey was and, and, and how they became successful. And it is all about hard work. I do find that, you know, they've done one course, that's it. They, you know, they, they can, if they take what they've learned in that course, they can run with it uh, and they can make money. But it's not as simple as that. You've got to do background research. You've got to back test. You've got to develop your own trading plan because the trading plan that's of the guy that's taught you may not be best suited to what you want out of trading um, and your temperament and until you understand what those pieces of the jigsaw are and put those pieces together and, and you know get your final picture uh, you know, I, I think you will struggle and just just to add to that it's interesting that you and I should talk today because just over the last couple of days I've had a few emails back from a presentation I did I did a presentation in Covent Garden in London on November the 5th the room was packed. Um, yeah, they couldn't get any more people in the room. It was great. It was a really successful day. Uh, I met a lot of interesting traders. But what came out of it was um, I had a few emails back saying, Mike, I loved your presentation. It was really good. But your courses are too expensive. You know, do, do you do cheaper courses? You know, can you just give me um, an ebook for half the price? And, I, I, and it just occurred to me that you know, there's a lot of people out there who – just want to run with it. They want to get into trading quickly, want to you know, open their accounts and start making money. But it's like anything else. You have to appreciate that to grasp all the pieces of the jigsaw, you need to have done the groundwork and more than the groundwork, you need to have researched it so to the point where your skill set is enough for you to manage your account and, and conduct yourself professionally uh, in the same manner in which, you know, a, a trader with a, with a hedge fund or whatever it is is, is going to manage his account. And you've got to grasp that before you can move on, I think. That's very true. And also, markets change over time. Even just recently, I mean, look at it. We had Brexit. We had Trump win. We had Italian prime minister quit. We have um, – our New Zealand Prime Minister quit. So all those events have different implications on the market. And sometimes the market just does one thing and completely turns around and does completely different things. So, for example, Trump there went uh, went down, then went up. So how do you know about that or how, or how do you play that if you don't have those background skills that you can bring in? I think and that, that brings me to, that you may be to talk about an aspect of my trading that helped me fail through that transition period I talked about because, you know, I would listen at once in the early stages of my technical 
trading career, I would listen to two, three, four other 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 traders, um, and I would f- f- focus on what two, three, or four of them said instead of using my own skills and my own analysis and my own hard work. And I think the, what I'm coming around to say is that yeah, you can have different events in the market. You can have the market pull in different directions and lots of different news stories come in to, to, to confuse you. But at the end of the day, all the markets are doing are, are behaving in patterns and behaving in you know, quite formulaic, prescribed ways. So if you get a jolt to the market, you know, like Brexit, and you get that de- huge downdraft in the pound, the way in which the pound reacts after Brexit is still very, very technical. And can still be plotted and and predicted, and that's the key thing to remember that you don't get distracted by the stories and what people believe, what CNBC are saying or what Bloomberg are saying. Make sure that you're equipped to analyse your the charts and the markets that you're interested in in a way that is going to protect your account first and foremost, but get you know good entries and good exits. There's no such thing as brilliant exits and, and brilliant entries, but as long as you're in the trend, there's no such for me. There's no such thing as a bad exit. And once you start grasping that, I think you can uh, master your own trading uh, a lot quicker. I think. I absolutely agree with that. So, when you were making that transition, was there any particular aha moment where you thought, "Yes, okay, there was. I have found the missing piece"? I was. I always listen to other traders. I sit in on other webinars or seminars etc very very interested in, in how other people come into the markets because there's different strategies there's different methods and some i was listening to one experienced trader and he said in in a webinar he said that fibonacci is the code of trading and i i thought about that and i i asked myself could that could that be true could that be the case can can you have a method, um, you know, a tool in trading that is actually the code of trading. So I went away and I was already using Fibonacci anyway, but it wasn't it wasn't a priority at that particular point in my trading career. So I went away and I looked at Fibonacci uh, in a slightly different way and applied it uh, more rigorously. And that to me was an aha moment because in this days in these days of high frequency trading. I always ask myself the question, well, why did that market move swiftly from that point, from point A to point B? Why did the market then move from you know, B to C, etc.? And I found if, if you really understand Fibonacci to its full, full extent and, and you trust it, I, to, to me personally, that, that was a massive improvement and a massive leap in my trading. So that, that was my aha moment in trading. Now, was there a particular person who had a tremendous impact on you as a trader? And how did this person impact you? Yeah, I, I, that's, a, that's a good one. And my answer to that is the person who's had the most impact to me as a trader is me. <laughs> Strange answer. Well, it, it, is it? I mean, because when I came into trading and, and I come back to that period where it wasn't going so well for me, it was perseverance and an effort and work that got me back on the right track so i would actually sort of flip that question around i mean is was there a person that perhaps a negative impact on my trading and to some extent a lot of the people that you know i was taught by four or five six different people on different courses different types of courses and so on and this is a while back now and i found and there wasn't a single one single person that really gave me a, a template that I walked away with and I started making money out of. So I, when, when you asked me that, I'm, I really struggled to, to sort of grasp somebody's name because it was only by taking the best of the courses that I'd been on and the books I'd read and piecing it together that I came out of it as a, as a profitable trader. So... That's why I set up Trade Easy Way in the first place, because I didn't think there was enough people out there who could teach simply enough and clearly enough to help people get into trading quickly and professionally. So I, I like that question because it, you know, I, I thought back at all the people I'd been 
come in contact with or people I'd, I'd met and they taught me. And I couldn't think of some of somebody who made a tremendous impact on me, but, I, but they all played their part in getting me to focus on what I should be doing as far as getting my trading and my trade plan together. So in terms of you having influence on yourself, you mentioned uh, perseverance and, you know, just being able to make through that. So from that aspect, what are some of the things you think uh, a person can do? Let's say somebody's struggling with their trading, they just haven't found that missing piece yet. And not so much, maybe not so much from the strategy perspective, or, you know, is there any recommendation that you can give that person? How did they get through this difficult period to get um, to the other side. I think they have to. They have to do a few things. They hopefully they've kept a, a trade journal so they can see a, a, perhaps a pattern in their trading. I think if somebody is struggling and they want to find that door, they want to find that way forward. They want to find that solution to the problem of, of you know, becoming a professional trader. I would have to say that if they're in that position, the chances are they've probably not done enough education. And I think if I think back to, to uh, you know, my period where I wasn't, uh, where I was having problems and I wasn't consistent, you know, what was it about my, that situation? What was it about what I was doing then that was wrong as opposed to what happened when I came through that door you know, as a professional trader? And it was, it, it was education. It's all down to education. And like, and I come back to those emails again. I, you know, it just shocked me that I had. You know, a few people writing to me. My, you know, this particular course, I actually thought was was one of the cheapest courses I've ever, I've ever produced, and yet, you know, that packed room. You know, some of those people were telling me it was a, you know, it was a really good, inspiring presentation. And I'm, I'm using their words, not mine. But they still couldn't put a small, what I think is a relatively small amount of money on the on the on the line on the table. To commit to their development and their education, and I think I think there's a lot. There must be a lot of traders out there who are trying to do this off their own back. Maybe they're watching YouTube videos. Maybe they're just listening on on the short free videos that we all do to introduce ourselves. And and I think there's just not enough people who are ambitious enough and willing to commit to a proper professional education. I'd have to say that you know all, all the questions that you've asked and your sort of conversation, the way in which this interview has gone, just sort of makes me want to emphasise that because that's where that's what made the difference to me, and I think that's what can make the difference to the people who are listening to this. That's very true, and you know, if you look at any kind of any different area of our lives, for example, let's take a look at sports. I, I talk about sports a lot just because uh, there are some analogies that can be drawn quite easily from sports. If we were learning, let's say, how to play basketball, <laughs> we wouldn't just go watch a YouTube video and start, you know, practicing and then think that we can go play in NBA. That we just don't think that way. I mean, we send our kids to camps and we pay all this money to train them on a skill like basketball or soccer or whatever that may be that they're not even going to use mm. in their professional lives later on. You know, the, the, the percentage of people that actually turn pro athletes is so very small. And yet we are willing to spend that kind of money on those activities. I know people who spend thousands mm. of dollars on sending their kids into sports camps and stuff. And yet we are not willing to, even spend a few thousand dollars on taking a proper course or educational program that would actually lay out the steps for us. So I think there is a bit of a disconnect there where, unfortunately, due to the YouTube age, we feel that we can just learn everything on YouTube. And it's hard to do that. The short videos are not meant to provide you know, in-depth education. They're meant to just highlight a point or highlight something. They, there's just not enough time. And... You just can't do that. So I, I agree with you. I think taking that proper education, that's why we go like dentists. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think you wouldn't go to a dentist who just yeah, exactly. I mean, you're, you're, you're risking your capital. You're, you're going into the market and risking your money. And yet, you know, it just, I can just see so many people, you know, in front of me in these presentations who, who are not prepared to, to commit, you know, they'll, they'll, talk to me about how they think my courses are expensive. Well, you know, how much money have you lost? <laughs> if you're trading and not doing that well, how much money have you lost? Well, if mm -hmm. you'd have been on a, pro on a proper call, a pro proper professional course, and learnt to become a professional trader, 
a manager account, manage your conduct in the markets and have a strategy that is going to help you be consistent, unless you've invested in that, it isn't going to work. I mean, I, in my own children, they're, they're both very successful in their own fields. And, you know, they're, they're self-starters. You know, I, I, I taught them to be self-starters. I didn't uh, wrap them up in cotton wool. I didn't in, you know, send them to uh, you know, expensive private schools. What I did do is instill in them the importance of doing what you enjoy and doing it well. You know, I, I love trading and and I wanted, always wanted to be, you know, professional. I wanted to enjoy it all the more. And I did, and I achieved that by investing in education. Now, in terms of um, developing, um, is there a successful habit that you believe has um, contributed to your trading success? I'll, I'll answer that very quickly now because I've answered these other questions <laughs> in a sort of long, long, drawn out way. I think it's just a good success habit of a successful trader, I think, is having a certain amount of time every single week and, and every day where you, where you just turn the markets off um, and you do enough preparation. You, know, you don't expect to turn your PCs on, get your charts up, and then suddenly start trading and making money. You, know, you need to have spent enough time uh, away from your screens, and you, then you need to have spent enough time at your screens before you take a trade, and, and all that preparation is going to help you be a consistent trader. So, so the habit of a successful trader I'm suggesting to you is making available enough time you know, without dipping in and out of the markets of just looking at your, thinking about your strategy and preparing your charts, preparing yourself in a way that will help you be in the right frame of mind and focused when you do start trading. That's, that's my hot tip to be a, for a successful habit. Um, actually, I couldn't agree more. I am, um, I, I talk a lot about pre- preparation as well. So perfect. Is there a book or yes, resource that you Yes, I think one of the best books I ever read, um, I've read it more than once, is a book called Trade Your Way to Financial Freedom by a Mr. Tharp. That's T-H-A-R-P, Tharp. Trade Your Way to Financial Freedom. The reason why his book is good is because he doesn't just talk about the markets and doesn't just talk about behavior and, and patterns and so on. He talks about the whole aspect of, of managing yourself, and managing your account. And I can't emphasize that more. And I think that was a good investment of my time reading that book. And, and I went back to it again, uh, sort of six months after I first read it. And I just thought, you know, what, what's in that book is really good, really everything you, sh- you should be doing, you should know. And I think that's time well spent going to that book. If you could do your trading journey over again, knowing all that Ooh, you know now, one, what would you do for differently? Quite a while. Well, I, I think, or maybe is there um, a shortcut you could suggest to the listeners? I think one thing that people used to tell me in the early stages, and it was a while before I did it, was was actually keeping a journal. I think if I had been better at keeping a, a, a trade journal of, and, and logging my trades, particularly as I started life as a day trader, I think that would have got me to a, a profitable position a lot quicker because I could have seen you know as soon as you start recording your your thoughts in a journal and you and you and you, you can log what you're doing on a particular day and a particular part of the day you can see the problems that you're knocking up against and I think and you can deal with them quicker uh, particularly if you try if you're looking to become a professional day trader uh, you know, I think that that would have sped my journey up just by keeping a much much better journal in the, in the earlier period of my early experience that's great so if somebody wanted to get best in touch way with you mike of what's getting the best in touch way to with me you? is just to google trade the easy way my website is trade the easy way.com or one word um or you can just google mike hamilton and hopefully mike hamilton trader and there should be enough things written about me and so on and uh, content on the web that will that will throw that up but uh, yeah and by all means just on Facebook and, and Twitter, of course. So I, I think there are almost too many channels these days. I, I find it's a bit of a pain, really, because some people like WhatsApp, some people like Facebook. It drives me nuts. It, well, <laughs> too, too, too many channels. But anyway, mm-hmm. tradetheeasyway.com, all one word, <laughs> uh, and you can just, just send me a message from, from the site uh, nice and easy. 
Great. Thank you so much, Mike. I really um, love the ideas that you mentioned here, keeping a trade journal. I know that's a difficult one, but it's a very necessary step to do, being prepared, and also focusing on the education. Some great ideas that you have thank shared Thank you very here. much. Thank it's, you so much um, for joining great. us today. Enjoyed that. That's great. Look forward to talking to you again. Because some people like WhatsApp, some people like Facebook. It drives me nuts. It, well, <laughs> too, too many channels. But anyway, mm -hmm. tradetheeasyway.com, all one word. <laughs> Uh, and you can just, just send me a message from the, from the site. Uh, nice and easy. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. I really um, love the ideas that you mentioned here, keeping a trade journal. I know that's a difficult one, but it's a very necessary step to do, being prepared and also focusing on the education. Some great ideas that you have Thank shared Thank you very here. much. Thank it's, you so much um, for joining great. us today. Enjoyed that. That's great. Look forward to talking to you again. Look forward to talking to you again.